are going to have one more speaker here, and his name is James Smith. He's a graduate of OU MSW program and a member of the National Association of Social Workers. Uh, please welcome James Smith. Okay. All right. Everyone has said a lot about the ideas, and I love the idea of not thinking about social dis distancing as the same thing as phys physical distance distancing. Let me share my screen here. Okay, I just want to talk a little bit just for a few minutes about what we're doing. A lot of us, as I mentioned earlier, um, about a week and a half ago, they told us, um, go home and don't come back until we tell you that you can come back to work. And there are a lot of challenges when we're doing our work, when we're trying to work from home. We have to think about the first challenge really that a lot of people have is just the technical aspect of it, the technology. People just aren't really sure <clears throat> how to connect. Um, right now we're on Zoom and everyone is getting the opportunity to connect both socially and also get a little bit of insight and inspiration for how they're doing their job. So that first challenge of technology is, you know, what kind of connection do you want to get? And a lot of you have different opportunities. And if you can think of any other platforms other than the ones that are here, um, please, you know, pipe up or put something in the chat. I'm kind of curious, because this is a lot of different platforms to connect on, but what are some others that you guys can think about? Google Classroom, TikTok. Uh, yeah, there are tons, and there are tons that are um, just for, you know, teaching. Um, they've got platforms just for conferences as well. Uh, these are just some of the ones that you can access really quickly and easily online. Um, I just want to talk about a couple really quick. Uh, Microsoft Teams has been incredible in helping our office with collaboration. And some organizations, they've decided that they want to use Teams and they use it through the organization but you can access it through Office 365 and you can get on there. What's really great about it is it's not just like Link or Skype. It's not just a meeting platform, but you can also access your Outlook. It connects Outlook and OneDrive and all of those other areas that you might work with in your office. Now, if you're just wanting to, you know, get on, a platform with a lot of people, Zoom and GoToMeeting, um, a lot of people ask, you know, well, what's the difference between the two of them? There aren't a lot of differences anymore. Um, I personally think Zoom is a little more user friendly and there are a few more little fun aspects that it allows. Um, if you look <clears throat> online, you will see that Zoom has the opportunity for um, putting up different surveys during the um, presentation, um, people can vote. Um, go to meeting is a little more um, business oriented, but those are just three different types that are good for getting together. When we're in this period where we're having to physical distance ourselves, it really helps out a lot when we can just get on our computers and not necessarily for a conference, not just for, you know, working from home, but there's nothing wrong with just getting in touch with a bunch of your friends and getting everybody up there on the screen. Um, at work, every few days, we have a little conference with ourselves, and all we do is we just pull up a little meeting and we eat lunch together. We watch each other put pizza in our face or eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, 
and we just sit there and we get that little bit of social connection that we used to have in the office, you know, being close, but we get to have that, you know, just from our screens, you know, we try and save all that we can. The other thing, and you will notice this on the zoom up there, you will see a little green lock there that says, you know, encrypted. Uh, we have to think about security on the different platforms we're on. Uh, the three that I mentioned are very high security platforms. If you're going to be doing your work, if you're going to be talking with clients, you have to think about the different way that you want to talk with those clients. And you have to think about what you're going to be saying to the clients. Not everything, the IRS has pages and pages about what you can't say, you know, about financial information. But just think about it. If you're going to be talking with clients, um, make sure that whatever platform you decide to use to talk with them, make sure that it's encrypted and make sure that it's safe. Um, moving on to kind of the next thing I'll deal with, um, trying to be professional. When we're on a screen, we think, you know, all I have to do is wear a shirt, you know, or all I have to do is wear a tie, you know, and I'm okay. Um, you might not want to spend this much time on your beard, you know, gentlemen, but another thing to think about is, you know, when you get up in the morning, you know, shave, brush your teeth, brush your hair. Um, it's not just a matter of making sure that you look okay to everyone that you're working with, making sure you look okay in the conference, but it helps us mentally and emotionally to have that system, you know, get up in the morning, do your shave, brush your teeth. You know, when we're in this position, when we're stuck in our houses, we do need to keep up our habits and just getting up and shaving and brushing your teeth every morning. Um, that's the kind of habit that can help you get started for the day. So you don't feel like your whole day is lost. Um, the next suggestion is if you're going to have one of these platforms up, try and get a good profile picture for yourself up. Uh, and I discourage you from using, you know, Robert Downey Jr. or Jennifer Aniston. You know, what you want to do is you want to find a good picture of yourself up there. Because if you're not going to be sharing video with people, you at least want them to see um, a picture of your face because when people hear your voice, there's a connection there. But when they're looking at the screen, they need to see your face there too so they can connect with you both ways. Um, I actually don't have uh, my picture up on everything. I notice Jason's with the little bunny. I've actually got a little Linus for my profile pic on another. And the reason I make this suggestion is um, a suggestion that I was given earlier this week by someone else. And it makes a lot of sense that if we're going to connect, and if the only way we're going to be able to connect for a while is through our screens, then we ought to make sure that our faces are up there on the screens as well, even if we're not going to uh, do our video. Um, I mentioned earlier, you know, you know, brush your hair, brush your teeth, you know, get started in the morning, keep those habits up. And this week on NPR, they mentioned a gentleman who um, got on his video conference and neglected to notice that he was sharing his camera and he didn't have any clothes on actually. So that's another thing to think about is don't just think about keeping your mic muted so that you don't upset the conference or that someone hears your dog barking in the background, but also make sure that your camera is off when it needs to be off. Um, if you're going to get up and take a break, if you're going to um, run to the restroom or something, make sure that you're turning off both your sound and your camera. Those are just a couple of suggestions. And I'm going to stop sharing here in a second and look at the chat. And really what I'm interested in learning from everyone who's on the conference today is what kind of challenges have you faced, but not just questions for me to answer. I would like um, everyone who's here to encourage their peers that are here as well. You know, what have you learned this week that can help 
us? What have you learned that can help me perhaps? So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Or if you have any suggestions, I'll be glad to hear what you have to say as well. Physical activity, okay, wait, anything that can't be done in an online format, that's a challenge that I've had um, with one of my classes online when I found out that um, it, was, it was my evening class and then I found out that I was gonna be teaching it online. I heard from a lot of my students, the biggest complaint I got from them was the activities, the games that we used to play in class and just that kind of socialization and what i've been trying to teach them is just new ways to socialize and new what new ways that they can do activities and interact online other than just physical touching and you know slapping people on the back you know those fist bumps and things like that i can't think of anything other than that that can't be done online. Have you come across any limitations personally or professionally? Um, one of the biggest limitations that I've found is keeping um, the office culture um, social, making sure that everyone still feels comfortable one of the suggestions that I would make with the Microsoft Teams app that we use, you can call people. It's kind of like just a Facebook messenger, but if you have a, if somebody has a question, they can just call you up. Um, if you have a question for anyone, I suggest that, you know, don't think that you have to have a big old conference or you have to have a big old meeting scheduled. You have to have something like this in order to use video conferencing. I encourage people, uh, just hop on your phone. And if you've got Messenger, you can do that chat there or Facebook Live. I encourage everyone, not only use your phones to call people to connect, but also you know, use those video options because for right now, we can't see each other physically. Maybe this is the time when we really need to start using the technology we have to see each other um, in any way that we can. One of the other challenges that I've found is my almost 80 year old parents trying to convince them to use Skype unsuccessfully, unfortunately. But that's been another challenge is older relatives, you know, kind of trying to convince them, you know, to move this direction. I know that everyone has probably seen plenty about, you know, teleworking tips and there's a million things, you know, if you Google it, but I've got a couple of files that I want to share with everyone that you can uh, take for yourself and you can print them out and maybe you can put them on your desk at home or you can share with your friends to just help you get through the day. One of the other <clears throat> aspects of working at home that has surprised me actually someone told me to start writing down, keeping track of, you know, all the work that I do all day long, because it's been almost like whack-a-mole, you know, dealing with problems one thing after another. And at the end of the day, it just kind of felt like, you know, I didn't get anything done because I just sat in front of my computer and I was having to respond to people back and forth. And the suggestion was, you know, just start keeping track of the work that you're doing during the day. And that way, at the end of the day, you can look and you can see, you know, hey, I did something. And the next day, you can take that list and you can kind of look at it and it can kind of help you prepare, you know, for your plans for that day. And that's helped me, you know, become a little more organized.
Did anyone else have any other questions? <clears throat> I was going to say real quick that um, do you see possibly more challenges with separation of family and the work front at home because my husband's a teacher and my kids are at home and trying to have defined boundaries has been really complicated right now. That's been a big challenge that I've seen with my friends and the people I work with. On one side, we're being asked to physically distance ourselves from each other. <clears throat> On the other side, we're closer to our children than we've been a lot of times. You know, it used to be, you know, the kids, they went off to school and we went off to work. And the only time that we had to uh, interact with them, the only times we were together, you know, was in the evenings. Now people are having to learn not only to, you know, physically distance from others, they're also having to learn how to be closer to each other. And ways that I can encourage that is just like we're learning more about how to use screens and how to use the computer to connect socially, we can also take this opportunity to learn how to create the distance that we need in the home. Does that make sense or does that address your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. James, a lot of times, yeah. Oh, James, do you see there's another com uh, another question in the chat? Oh, yeah. When leading presentations on trying to connect with a client, body language tells a lot that is somewhat lost over virtual connections. That's true. Um, I encourage you that if you're talking with the client, you know, make sure that both of you are, you know, doing the video if possible, and I encourage you to encourage, you know, your clients to um, share video. You do lose a little bit of that body language, but a lot of body language does still come through through video. There are a lot of resources. One thing that you may <clears throat> or may not notice, if you do a lot of virtual conferences, I've learned how often I touched my face. And that's what we hear about, you know, every day of the week is don't touch your face. And I've been watching myself, you know, on the screen there and I'm realizing, wow, you know, I'm touching my face a lot more than I used to. And you will still pick up things from body language just by seeing how your clients are reacting on the screen and you can listen to their voice. You just have to ask them to be a little bit more forthcoming sometimes. I think this will possibly even teach us a little bit more about how to watch body language a little bit better in these times. Another suggestion with your clients is if they want to connect, um, speak with them about the connection that they want to use because that's a challenge that we do have between our clients is not everyone has all of the resources that we necessarily do um, that has been given to us by our organizations or that we have on our own off home offices. I see a picture of you, Erica. <laughs> 